Welcome to our advanced Windows 10 lecture and we're going to cover the an understanding of Windows 10 historically booting off firmware starting with the old basic input output system called BIOS up until UEFI with CSM enabled and then finally UEFI enabled natively. We're going to look at all of those and the impact it has on Windows 10 and troubleshooting. Let's first understand what is firmware? Firmware is software code that initializes the motherboard, gets all the motherboard up and running, and finds the files to launch the operating system. And all of that software is burned into a chip and soldered or socketed onto a motherboard. Now firmware has been around forever and ever. In the PC world, it's over 30 years old. It has many limitations just because of its age it definitely needed replacing. Manufacturers and software developers came together and designed a new firmware called UEFI, United Extensible Firmware Interface. It was new, yes, and it had all kinds of new features, but there were many problems. We are so pumped to have this new firmware technology, but it takes time to get operating systems, drivers, so much of the PC ecosystem had to be changed in order to embrace this new firmware. So while everybody was grappling with the new firmware that was going to be put on motherboards and all the challenges that brought in, the organization that was running UEFI decided to implement what was called Compatibility Support Module, CSM, and it was built in to this new firmware. And basically what it did was it gave backward compatibility. So if you enabled this option in UEFI, it acted like that old bias. So here you've got a brand new motherboard and it's got UEFI, but many companies shipped them with CSM enabled. So if you look at the column, as we look at Windows boot process and you look at the bias column, brand new motherboard, with UEFI but CSM enabled boots just like the old BIOS. Only when you run UEFI in native mode do you look at the other column on the right hand side and see how Windows boots that way. Now remember both of these BIOSes are UEFI. Let's compare UEFI native, UEFI with CSM enabled. Big difference. One, when we partition our hard drives, they use master boot record partitions, and we can't use partitions any greater than two terabytes. When we boot with UEFI and CSM enable, we force our CPU into 16-bit mode during the firmware session, and we only have one megabyte of accessible memory because we're acting like those old biases, remember? The only thing that was advantage for a while was a very fast network stack used for imaging, that changed in 2019. So what about native UEFI? Lots of cool things. We moved to the GPT partition, huge partitions. Anything above two terabytes is fine. We run CPUs in 32-bit or 64-bit architecture. No problems. And if you got 16 gigs of memory, native UEFI has no problems with that. It gives a secure boot. We can run anti-malware prior to the operating system. All kinds of features. We can even boot to PCI storage, Express Storage, and so many more. I can't tell you how many times I've had a student or staff member bring me a PC or a laptop, and it's got a new copy of Windows, and we'll go in and check the BIOS, and sure enough, UEFI has CSM enabled. Not good. So how can we tell? Well, one, we can run Windows and run MS Info 32, and that will help us identify is UEFI in the CSM. We can also look at disk properties. I'll show you that in a minute. And then finally, you can go in your firmware and see is CSM, CSM enabled. So if I launch MS Info 32, I can look under system and under bias mode. And if that shows bias, 
then you know you've got CSM enabled. If it's UEFI, then you're running UEFI native. Under disk management, I can look under the properties of my bootable disk, and we'll demonstrate this in a minute. And if I see that I've got my partition style is MBR, then I've got UEFI with CSM enabled. This is not good. If you have full native UEFI, your partition will be a good partition, GPT. One way we can determine whether we have UEFI with CSM turned on is go to system information. So I'm going to go to my search bar and I can type in sysinfo32 and you can see it's popping up here with the system information desktop app. Let's go ahead and launch that and let me shrink this down a little bit. And if in the system summary here, in the system summary, you can see the bias mode. If yours says bias right here, not UEFI, but bias, then you know you have UEFI with CSM turned on. Another way is to launch control panel. And I just went in the search bar and launched the desktop app control panel. And I'm going to change this to small icons. Go to administrative tools and go to computer management console. And I'm just going to pull this down and go to disk management. I'm going to look to see the disk that boots. And I can tell that by this is the partition that launches Windows. Even though I may have other disks listed here, disk zero, in my case, is the bootable disk. And what I want to do is I want to click on this gray area, disk one, disk zero in my case, right mouse click and go to properties. I'm going to pull this over here and I'm going to choose the volume tab. Here you see partition style. If you see MBR, then you know you've got UEFI with CSM turned on. If you have good partition table, and that's your bootable disk, then you have native UEFI turned on. So I'm just going to show you a couple biases, and you can see where CSM is in the option of the bias. This is an HP system, and you can see again, you can see where you can enable it, or you can be UEFI native. Here's another one, and here's another one. Oh man, Mr. Vanderpool, I went and looked at my laptop or my PC, or I looked at my family members, and sure enough, CSM is enabled in their UEFI bias. Am I stuck? Well, in the past, you were. You had to reformat your hard drive and install Windows after you turned on UEFI native mode. Because the partitions on the hard drive are so different in the way that Microsoft installs Windows, either in CSM mode or native UEFI. Well, Microsoft had pity on you and they designed a tool, a utility called MBR to GPT that will allow you to convert your partitions on your hard drive so that you can boot into UEFI native mode. If you go to this link, this website, they have a video, they have step-by-step, -step, you can convert your machine to native UEFI without the loss of data. So as the utility runs, it runs like this. And if you look at the very bottom, after it completes re, uh, redesigning the partitions, you can then shut down, go to your firmware, turn on native UEFI mode, and voila, you've booted into Windows. I'm often asked, what is the real difference between UEFI and the old BIOS? In its simplest terms, UEFI is now a operating system. BIOS was not an operating system. It was a boot code. UEFI is a full-blown, very small, but very powerful operating system. This is an example of a firmware chip that is socketed, not, burnt, not soldered onto the motherboard. And this is very commonly where you find your firmware. So why am I wasting your time on this lecture? My philosophy about troubleshooting, if you're going to be a good troubleshooter, you cannot troubleshoot what you don't understand. So I'm walking you through this so you do understand you will be able to troubleshoot effectively. When Windows installs with a native UEFI enabled, it partitions your disk in a very specific way. First of all, it creates an EFI system partition. It also creates, Microsoft creates a special partition called an MSR partition. This is reserved for the boot manager 
so that it can understand how the rest of the hard drive is partitioned. EFI requires a special partition on your hard drive. Let's take a look at it. It must be partitioned with one of the FAT versions of file systems. Microsoft uses FAT32. There must be a folder in the root of that partition called EFI. Microsoft will add a subdirectory called Microsoft. In addition, Microsoft will add an additional subdirectory called boot, and that's where it's going to put the boot manager and the BCD registry hive. Now, how does the firmware know to find this path and this information? This is put in by Windows into the firmware's NVRAM. When you boot up on UEFI natively, you will launch boot MGR FW.EFI. That's the boot manager for a Windows installation on a native UEFI. The BCD file is the registry hive and that will be launched by Boot Manager. So let's let me demonstrate how to get access to our UEFI system partition. You notice if I mouse over here, this is our UEFI. Let me show you how to get in there so you can actually see what we've just looked at. So to do that, we're going to run the command command line, the CMD, as an administrator, and then we're going to type in these commands. And X is going to be any available drive letter. So you can go to Explorer real quick, check your machine, and look at your drive letters. I am using C and D, so I can use anything but C and D for X. So I'm going to type in CMD. And I'm going to right mouse click and run as an administrator. And I'm going to, I like to copy and paste text. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to modify this to Z because I don't have a Z drive letter used. And I'm simply going to select all this, copy, and come up to my editor, my command line. And right up here, I'm going to go to Edit, and I'm going to choose Paste. And it pops it right into the command line. And then I'm going to hit Enter. Now I'm going to change my drive letter to Z. Z, Z colon, do a DIR. So you can see that I'm in the partition. I ask it to mount that partition with the drive letter Z. And when I do a DIR, you can see our directory, EFI. Remember that is absolutely must be there for all UEFI native boot. We're going to explore a little bit. I'm going to change directory to the EFI folder and do a DIR. And there we see our Microsoft subdirectory. So if I change to Microsoft and I do a D, you can see we've got the various folders and subfolders required for our boot system. I'm going to change to boot, a boot subdirectory, do a DIR. There's our BCD. That's our registry key. And there is our boot manager, uh, boot manager fw.efi. So there is the file, the boot manager file that launches everything. That what, that's what actually launches Windows. And the first thing that it does is it comes up and reads this registry key, and that's what starts getting everything really rocking and rolling. All right, remember, you cannot troubleshoot what you don't understand. Let's review this one more time. The firmware chip is initialized when you hit the power button. The motherboard then is starting to be initialized by the software on that chip. Hardware is initialized, motherboard is initialized, post is ran, EFI drivers are launched. It then starts discovering devices and uh, disks. It will scan for a drive with the EPS partition. It will then look for in that partition the EFI folder. It pulls path and file information from the UEFI NVRAM. It will find the Microsoft boot folder launches boot manager boot manager then will load bcd and bcd will help it discover and launch the winloader.efi remember the boot process with native uefi and uefi with csm enabled is very different if you'd like a little bit more detailed information about the process
you can pause the video and take a look at this diagram. Now that you have finished watching this lecture on how this works, if you'd like to learn how to troubleshoot that, you can go to my channel and just search, and you can search for video one, advanced troubleshooting, and you'll get this video right here. That will walk you through the boot, how to troubleshoot, how to solve problems in this area.